Thank you all for joining us on the second call call after listening our presentation for the quarter and uh, half year uh, and it's uh, September 30th, 2023 has been uploaded on the Sox Exchange and I hope you all have had a chance to look at it. Let me begin by saying that we are extremely positive about the business perspective of our sector in general and your company in particular. Our performance in this quarter and half year is a testament of our strengths, which I quickly reiterate. <clears throat> we are an Indian manufacturing of uh, manufacturer of uh, high-end lighting solutions and operate primarily on ODM, that is original design manufacturer, that designs, develop, manufacture, and supply the product mainly LED lighting to our customers. And we work with our customers to develop, manufacture, and supply of products that are designed by us over the years. We have successfully developed a strong diversified product range as well. We operate largely in the niche, high value, and innovative product range. This has helped us create a strong and long-term relationship with our market custom customers, and the time has helped us to uh, strong uh, competence and transferable skills that has allowed us to diversify our product range from LED lighting to LED solutions as well as energy solutions and others. Over the years, we have placed strong importance on quality of the product and hence have created strong backward integration and in-house R&D that help us to provide end-to-end -end product solution and develop better control on supply chain and improve margins. Today, we create all our products in-house and manufacture all mechanical components of our products at uh, our manufacturing facility. Let me take uh, through the status of our expansion plan. Civil construction work uh, in the block one of uh, two lakh square feet is nearly completion and is ex expected to uh, operationalize by the end of Q4 20, uh, 24. This will be used for manufacturing LED home lighting, solar panel system, refrigeration lighting, and electronic uh, supplies. And we are going to add some new product line as well. <clears throat> this facility is aimed to enhancing our export business for new product development in the domestic market. We expect to we expect to have streamlined production line for all our product lines once the facility is overcome. Uh, uh, so come online. So now I will request Mr. Sajid Singh uh, to provide his thoughts on the quarter. Uh, on the quarter. Over to Mr. Sajid Singh. Thank you, Mr. Let me now take you through some of the key operational highlights of the quarter gone by. In our existing ODM business, we are happy to report that our business is growing. Despite a challenging business environment for LED industry, we posted 4% year-on-year growth in the revenue in second quarter of FY24 and a 13% growth in the first half year-on-year. -year. The fact that we are able to grow when other industry players saw their sales flatline is a testament to a strong relationship with our customers and our ability to deliver high-quality products. In our product display business too, despite the decline in the industry, we clocked double-digit sales growth in first half of FY24, year on year. However, in terms of our exports business, as you have been witnessing, the USA consumer market has been impacted to a certain extent by the inflationary pressures in developed economies. So continued dis disruption to discretionary spending impacted inventory clearances for our RV products in the USA. Going forward, we are confident that the efforts put in by our teams to build competencies and relationships will yield significant benefits. 
For the ODM lighting solution business, we are in the process of developing few highly innovative, innovative products which will be launched in the next three to four quarters. Secondly, for our product display lighting segment, we have poured it into the GCC market, which we believe has tremendous potential. The third key development is that we have started exporting some components of our commercial refrigeration segment to players outside India. In the quarter gone by, IQ's global footprint has got a fillip. We opened a branch in the USA to help with the distribution of our products as well as act as a support for customer service. With this, I conclude my remarks on the industry as well as our strategy for the way forward. I will now, uh, now request Subhashji to please go through the key financials. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Let me now take through the key financials for the quarter and half year ended September 30th, 2023. Before we commence, let me provide a few points to be considered in terms of our financials. As consolidation of our four subsidiaries, namely Fine Technologies Private Limited, Royalex Lighting Private Limited, Royalex Exports Private Limited, Royalex Lighting Private Limited, and IQO Solutions Private Limited was effective from 12 September 2022. Accordingly, Q2 FY24 and Q1 FY24 includes full consolidation financials while Q2 FY23 and H1 FY23 includes only 19 days of consolidated financials from 12 September 22 to 30 September 22 of subsidy company. Our deployment of IPO proceeds continued to be on track out of three objects. We have already repaid outstanding debt of 630 million from the IPO proceeds. 500 million was marked from the debt regiment and another 13, uh, 130 million from the GCP. Investment in the few uh, new facilities stands at 139 million as of September 30th, 2023. Out of uh, INR 3257.5 million, we have deployed 842.54 million. Let me take uh, you through the key headline numbers on a consolidated basis for Q2 FY24. Our revenue for Q2 FY24 was 1179 million, which translates into a growth of 9% on QOQ basis. For H1 FY24, our consolidated revenue stands at 2263 million. Profitability improved with the EBITDA margins growth of around 167 BPS QNQ to 22.7% in Q2 FY24, which is 21% in Q1 FY24. Our EBITDA came in uh, 267 million for Q2 FY24 and 495 million for H124. Profit after tax stood at 182 million for Q2 FY24 and INR 321 million for H1 FY24, which saw an increase due to improvement in operational performance as well as the other income which was mainly interest income on the undeployed IPO fund. We had healthy return ratios with NY's return of equity at 23% and return on capital employment at 28% for H1 FY24. This has been adjusted for the unutilized IPO funds. With the repayment of debt from the IPO proceeds, the company remains net debt negative. That concludes our opening remarks. I request the moderator to please open the floor for the questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchtone telephone. An operator will take your name and announce your turn in the question queue. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First 
question is from the line of Vipra Srivastava from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah, just wanted to know that the margins for uh, standalone basis for lighting has been decreasing quarter and quarter. So, what levels do you expect it to stabilize? Because this quarter also the margins are at 15% only, uh, so which is very less uh, from let's say a year ago. So, where do you expect it? Uh, so, broadly, if you look at the uh, margins on the standalone basis, uh, broadly the margins will remain uh, the same. Uh, but if you look at the margins on the consolidated basis, they have been uh, consistent. I mean, our performance has been consistent since, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, if you look at the numbers from FY23 as well, the first quarter, the second quarter. In fact, in the second quarter, I believe they have uh, gone up marginally. Uh, but on the standalone basis, yes, uh, we believe that it will remain uh, more or less uh, what you're seeing right now. Right. Uh, this one follow-up. So, uh, just want to understand the Royal X lighting is your commerce business, right? Commercial refrigeration. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Royal X lighting is subsidiary. Uh, is your commercial refrigeration business, right? Commercial refrigeration. Yes. So, uh, in X based on your uh, annual uh, report on the site, you did a revenue of 132 crores. Uh, that's the top line. So in FY24, how much do you expect from this subsidy? I mean, roughly, roughly. So if you look at, uh, I mean, I'll talk of the uh, the entire uh, business, which includes the product display and commercial refrigeration. So if you look at the uh, first half of this year, our revenue has uh, uh, actually gone up by around 10%, why or why, uh, first half. And uh, although uh, we were expecting better growth in this particular vertical, but uh, I am I'm sure you must be aware uh, the market trend right now that uh, actually there is a decline in the market, but we were still able to register uh, a growth of 10%. Uh, that is a double-digit growth. And uh, going forward in the second half of the year, we expect the numbers to uh, be even better because this year even the festive season got slightly pushed off. So we expect that by the end of the year, uh, we should be able to maintain a positive, uh, uh, you know, revenue and a positive growth in this particular segment as well. Yeah, cool. And last question. So in your last quarter's investor presentation, you also disclosed segment segment revenue, but this quarter you haven't done that. Any reason for that? Actually, we are going through a. Uh, actually, we are going through a slight change. If you look at the presentation that we have uh, posted this time, uh, to to give ease to you know the investors and for the general public at large, instead of showing the numbers based on uh, the particular uh, you know units, what we are doing is divided. Uh, we are dividing it into categories uh, like lighting. Uh, that includes, you know, all the LED lighting products, and then we have uh, the product display lighting, and then we have uh, energy solutions and others. So this will give a very clear indication as to which product category is performing, you know, uh, it, what numbers going forward, and we intend to provide the numbers also based on these uh, broader categories uh, by probably by the uh, end of next uh, quarter or by the end of next quarter. So this will give an ease of understanding to the investors and the public at large because uh, pre-IPO, you know, we were operating in a different uh, manner. We had different units catering to different particular markets. But now post-IPO, we, we understand that, you know, it, it, it creates a lot of confusion for the general investor and public at large to understand the way we present the numbers. So to bring everything uh, to a, you know, in a, in a simple manner, in simplicity, so that is what we are uh, now trying to do. Right. And uh, last question. So your uh, exports business, which is Royal X Exports, have relatively lower margins compared to, let's say, the control margin. So if, let's say, your export business grows, don't you expect there will be some margin dilution? 
See, actually, this this year the export business has seen uh, a decline, uh, and like I mentioned, you know, during the presentation also, these are due to some uh, factors. And on top of that, now that you've asked this question, I would like to, uh, you know, emphasize on one uh, one more issue that uh, is there in the export market, but now it's clearing up. So basically, I, I'll give you an example of our company how we performed, you know, during COVID. And what was our situation? And similarly, it, it will become easy for you to understand uh, what uh, was the issue in the U.S. market. The inflationary issues are there, but apart from that, uh, what happened is during COVID, uh, like you know, you know, certainly the lead times of the raw material semiconductors they went as high as you know one one and a half year, where the general lead time was not more than three to four weeks. Similar situation was there in the U.S. and U.S. you know primarily imports you know the finished product. There is no uh, manufacturing there. So for them, uh, the level of inventories that they have to maintain and the time that it takes for them to order a product and deliver a product is even higher as compared to India when we produce for the domestic market in India. So like we had to keep a lot of inventories in India when the you know during COVID. The semiconductors and uh, the other raw materials. We had to even stock uh, raw materials for up to an year because that was the kind of pressure uh, that we saw during COVID. So similar thing happened in the U.S. market, and because they had placed uh, you know too many orders uh, during COVID in order to just uh, make sure that the product line should not stop. Right now they are in the process of uh, just. Uh, taking those deliveries and uh, a lot of these uh, inventory holdups are now clearing up. Uh, so, for a matter of fact, uh, from this quarter onwards, we are uh, very confident that you know the numbers are going to improve uh, uh, drastically. That is because of the fact that uh, I mean the month gone by, we have almost done 50% uh, of the revenue that we did in the previous quarter. So now that revenue, uh, that uh, inventory holdup issue that was earlier there is has is now clearing up, and that is how the revenues uh, will go up. And because uh, the revenues were you know down by almost around 30, 35 percent in the export category, so that is why our uh, profit margins due to due to the operational expenditure uh, pressure, the profit margins were uh, slightly lower, but they will improve from uh, the third quarter onwards. And we are very sure about that. The things are very, very positive right now. Thank you, thank you, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Shivastav. The next question is from the line of Atul Mera from Motila Loswal Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hi. Good afternoon, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, when you spoke about uh, Block One commencement in Q4. Uh, can you give us the timelines for Block 2 and Block 3 commencement? When will it uh, uh, likely uh, happen? Perfect. Uh, perception, uh, the first phase is uh, almost 95 95% uh, finished because of this, you know, the uh, daily pollution situation. The perception has been stopped by the authorities. So I think by once it is open, we can finish that in a month and a half. Uh, so the first phase will be over. The second phase, we have already started the construction, and uh, like the, the uh, most important uh, is that that type taking is coming out of the uh, like uh, foundations, uh, foundations. So 80% of the foundations of the buildings are already done, but because it is stopped, so it is delayed by uh, sale. So our target before was to put uh, as uh, functional by, uh, you can say, 2025, first quarter, like that. And, and Mr. Rasul, we also would like to take this opportunity. We are already planning to invite, uh, you know, uh, the investors in the month of February. We would like to showcase the uh, the first tower and the work that is going on in the second tower. So I, I just wanted to take this opportunity. We'll do a formal invitation later, but we'll definitely invite all of you to come and have a look uh, at what we have created and what we are, uh, you know, uh, about to do uh, in the near future. And until that time, some machines which we have already uh, ordered, they will be commissioned, and uh, we can show you everything the way we are. 
Right, got it, got it. Thank you. So just to clarify again, so so block one, Q four, uh, block two, and block three. What is the internal timeline that we have today on these two uh, commencement of block two and block three? So, uh, like Mr. Hadid mentioned, that the construction has already started. So, uh, for block two, uh, so the block two timeline, uh, I can say that it will take close to around 12 to 14 mo- months for the construction to complete, and then uh, you know we'll have plans and uh, ordering of the machinery and everything. So that will happen. But the construction will take close to around uh, 12 uh, ma- ma- March or mid of June uh, next year. Yeah, next year. So around uh, uh, 14 months. Right. And and block three? How about block three? Once we finish with that, because the, what we are doing, uh, the block uh, second and block third basement, we will make together. So the uh, most time consuming is that uh, to coming out, uh, because it is near the Yamna bank, so we have to control the water, because the water level is very high, so those uh, small problems are coming up. But because we will do the construction simultaneously for the basement of block three also, so to, once we finish the block, uh, block two, immediately we will focus the block, block three, and it will not take much time because uh, we are making the basement. We are uh, doing together. Got it, got it. And so just to reconfirm, so basically uh, our pre-IPO existing facility was about three lakh square feet. With the expansion, we'll get to about eight lakh square feet. So it's almost like two point seven x. And if you were to uh, assume a similar uh, in terms of um, so revenue potential, the combined revenue potential is about close to 200 crores. So once everything, clock 1, 2, 3, everything is commenced, uh, 200 crores could be the revenue potential of uh, these three units, like all the existing person new capacity. So, yeah, as per, you know, if you look at the uh, FA terms that we generate uh, right now, and looking at uh, those effort runs, and once we reach to at least a 60 to 70 percent of the utilization of the plant, uh, then you have, then what you are saying, uh, we are in line uh, with that. Right. And then versus existing business, uh, where last year we did about close to 22 percent margin, 15 percent uh, pat margin. So once you once you are able to ex- expand and deliver on this uh, much larger capacity. Uh, do you think that your margin profile should uh, further improve from here or it should be more or less uh, what we have today or, or if you expect any deterioration? How do you think about margin profile on once you expand uh, your capacity? Uh, actually, we are confident about sustaining these profit margins. I cannot talk of you know whether we'll be able to improve them, but from what uh, we can foresee and the product lines that we have and the type of machinery that we have ordered, uh, we are pretty confident confident that even with the you know the competition uh, uh, stepping in, uh, we should be able to sustain uh, sustain the profit margins that we currently have. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sure. And so secondly, on the more near term, so last year we did 450 crores of revenues. Uh, first half we are at about 226. So what is your expectation for the current year? Given obviously there has been some slowdown in some segments. But uh, as you see things today, uh, what is your expectation uh, for the full year revenues and uh, profitability? Actually, if you know, looking at the current scenario in the market, uh, we we believe that you know we we still have been able to perform better than uh, better than the market conditions were. And going forward, like I mentioned, second uh, half of the year uh, is generally uh, always better than the first half, uh, and uh, that that seems to be the trend. And uh, already a month has passed, and we can see uh, you know that impact going on uh, that the revenues will increase in the second half, and. Uh, but, to be honest, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, like I mentioned, we are in that restructuring of the way we present uh, our numbers for a better understanding of uh, the investors. Uh, so once we are ready with the numbers with that, uh, what we have planned is by the end of fourth quarter, we'll start giving out uh, the yearly uh, uh, revenue, uh, uh, you know, idea, yearly revenue guidance. Uh, so that we'll start doing by the end of the fourth quarter, based on the new, uh, you know, uh, this distinction that we have done based on the product size. Right. So, so, so restructuring and all that is fine. But basically, what I'm trying to ask is for the financial year, 
what is the internal expectation versus 450 crores pro forma revenues last year uh, for this financial year when you do your budgeting what is the expectation that you have internally for uh, the current financial year on a total basis i am not asking any segmented numbers which i understand is uh, subject to restructuring and so on i'm looking at uh, the total number that is the number that i'm trying to uh, look for so we are also uh, like you know like i mentioned the first half has been uh, uh, a little different than what the expectation was uh, so we are also uh, running those numbers right now and we will definitely have already noted this point and we'll definitely come back to you once we have you know a, a substantial a number which we believe uh, is going to be uh, very close to the actual number that we'll achieve so we'll come back to you on that uh, definitely all right but, okay but, thanks but, at the same time, uh, if you have seen, you know, the first half and even the quarter on quarter uh, growth has been there. So that growth momentum is there and definitely uh, we will be ending uh, this year, no matter where the market is, but we are pretty confident that we will be ending this uh, uh, financial year uh, on a very positive note. Plus this year, uh, I would also like to mention is the year where we are laying foundations, you know, which will fruit, uh, which will give the fruits in the longer run. Uh, so that also once we uh, have that uh, uh, that invitation when we'll uh, share for the February uh, meeting, so we'll share the plans also what we are planning to do in the near future to give you a better uh, perspective in uh, the near future plus uh, the revenue guidance as well. All right. All right. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Ashish Rawat from MS Clebstuff. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, my question is about that new branch in the U.S. What uh, kind of branch is this? Is it sales plus service plus assembly? And how much revenue you are looking for to export markets, particular for this year? So, uh, actually, firstly, I would like to correct myself during the presentation i uh, mentioned branch but uh, it's actually a subsidiary that we have opened up in the us so i i wanted to anyway correct myself so thank you for you know asking this question uh, so it's a sub subsidiary that we have opened up in the us so till now uh, i mean whatever business that we've been doing in the us we were doing directly from india uh, so the plan from the beginning was always to have uh, a subsidiary, a company there and, uh, you know, a warehouse as well. Uh, so this is the first step that we have taken in that direction by opening a subsidiary so that we can have direct access to the market. Uh, we, you know, in a, we will be in a better state to understand what the, where the market is going and, you know, the current situation for the, from the past six months, the situation that was there. Uh, so if something like this is happening or even on the positive side, you know, if the market is growing at a very good rate, so we want to have that presence over there in the in the local market with our own sales team so that they can give us proper guidance of where the market is and what are the, uh, like right now, we uh, the products that we have, they can, uh, you know, be uh, catered to a lot of uh, different markets there within the U.S., so we want to capture uh, those areas, those avenues where our products are more more than capable of being supplied. So that is the only reason we have set up this office with a very experienced sales team, uh, which we have sent from India, and they are uh, positioned there, and they are working uh, since the past uh, al already, I think, a month or so. Uh, so that is what the intention is to have a subsidiary there in the U.S. So uh, we can have the uh, like first-hand information that what is going on and. Uh, Customer also like once we are they uh, we are a, a, a US based company because it is registered in USA uh, uh, USA so uh, they feel that they are working with a local company uh, rather than uh, they are importing the product so this will definitely boost our sales uh, overall. And so, how much uh, revenue you think this year is coming from the export market? So, so, like we mentioned, you know, about the revenue guidance, we'll definitely come back on that by the uh, end of uh, the fourth quarter. We'll start giving out the revenue guidance uh, yearly basis. Uh, but for now, uh, I mean, I can definitely say that uh, if we have direct access to the market and if we can, you know, uh, have a, if we have a sales team which can 
uh, go to a lot of uh, places from uh, apparently we were doing you know uh, calls or mails from india but now instead of that if the person can go and visit the customer that will definitely have a much uh, bigger impact uh, to the sales and uh, but the, just because we have recently just set up the office uh we have certain plans going uh, on right now discussions going on at very nascent stages but we'll definitely come back to you by the uh, end of uh, quarter 4 for the revenue guidance sir as you said uh, uh, one more question please as you said that you are opening the new product line in next 3 to 4 quarters uh, can you throw some light on what are the new products you are going to launch so uh, in the presentation the new uh, innovative products that we mentioned uh, were for the odm business that we are into uh, so that is one space uh, that we are in but uh, i cannot uh, you know really comment on the type of product because we have just started the development on that and uh, once we are through with that the approvals are there we'll definitely uh, probably by the end of fourth quarter we'll be able to throw more light on the uh, uh, on the type of products that we are doing uh, but they are definitely very high end high innovative uh, you know products uh, that we have just started development on and not just the odm business uh, like i mentioned during the presentation we have set up our footprint in uh, gcc uh, as well for the uh, product display lighting so a lot of development is going on in that category as well a lot of products are right now under certification for that particular region because every region requires a a set of uh, certificates for that uh, particular country or region so those product that development is happening uh, as we speak and uh, uh, you know from day one we have been constantly uh, telling about the uh, constant r&d that is happening the number of products that you know are always in the pipeline so we generally have around 30 to 40 products which are always in the pipeline under development uh, for all different verticals so that is something that Uh, you know is consistently happening and uh, this is uh, within the vertical that we uh, are already doing and likewise for the export region also export vertical as well uh, the rvs in the us uh, we have recently started the lithium ion uh, you know uh, battery supply uh, too earlier we were doing lighting for indoor outdoor uh, then solar panels and charge controllers and now we have recently started the lithium ion battery supply too so that is going to even further boost uh, our sales uh, in that particular segment we are just waiting uh, for the revenue uh, the, for the inventory clearance uh, issue to sort which is now on the verge of clearing uh, uh, there, there is an upward trend from october uh, itself so i mean these are the developments that are happening all across the verticals not just one vertical one one more question regarding the total capacity as you mentioned you including the new blocks 2.7 lakh square feet plus existing capacity you have you have you are able to uh, uh, do 1200 cr plus am i right uh no that was actually for the new facility that is being set up so that question was uh, related to the new facility that is being set up and what what are the revenues expected from the new facility so to answer that i mentioned about the fa terms of our existing facility and based on that the new facility will uh, you know have that level of uh, revenue generation so our fa terms have uh, always been historically in the range of 5 5 and a half to 6 so that will continue to happen going forward as well okay okay fine thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you participants to ask a question you may please press star 1 the next question is from the line of darshil from crown capital please go ahead uh, hello uh, thank you so much for taking the question i uh, hope i'm audible uh i mean if you can speak a little louder that will be great uh, hello is this better yeah yeah better now yeah uh, thank you so much and congratulations on a great set of results sir uh so just wanted to uh, uh, understand sir so a block 4 what kind of capex is put in into the block number uh, block 1 which is going to get uh, commercialized in fy 25 uh, so block block 1 uh, is uh, you know almost almost it is uh, complete and uh, block 2 and block 3 is under construction that is started the spent on uh, block uh, total spent was uh, you know that uh, we did for 
uh, civil construction is uh, 44 million uh, in last uh, uh, quarter. In, uh, from the IPO money, that we 44 million we already spent on the uh, civil construction. Uh, a lot of plant and machinery has uh, been ordered, uh, which will come, you know, by the end of the third quarter or beginning of the fourth quarter. Uh, so as and when these machines arrive, a lot of, uh, you know, capex is going to be utilized uh, on those uh, plant and machinery as well. So that will happen during the time of, you know, uh, just before the deliveries around that time. So orders have been placed. But, you know, these machines, they have a long lead time, uh, so that is uh, that is the only reason quarter four is uh, what we are looking at, the completion of the block one. Uh, so, you wanted to ask, total in terms of our, you know, investment in civil and plant, block one would be around the range of around 60 CR, or how much would it be, like, say, how much have we invested? So block one in total, you know, the building plus the plant and machinery, uh, there's like building would be close to around uh, 45 uh, CR and uh, the plant and machinery uh, will be close to around 25. Uh, so in total, block one uh, will be close to around 70, 70 CR in, t in terms of value. Uh, correct, correct. Okay, sir. So, sir, as you said, our asset on key will be around uh, 5 uh, 5.5, even if I take on a lower end, so can we expect around uh, 350 CR revenue from this block one? Would that be a fair assumption? And what kind of a build-up can we see from block one in terms of capacity utilizations? How would it pan out for the next year? <laughs> so we have already laid out, <clears throat> you know, plans, uh, but because it is such an early stage right now, uh, operationalized you know it will be by the end of uh, the fourth quarter and uh, we will be adding uh, you know the machineries which we have ordered uh, in the next four to five months and like you mentioned uh, uh, the FA turns uh, have been always in the range of five to six they will remain in that range but it uh, it will take some time uh, in order for us because it's a new setup and we are talking about our matured, uh, you know, facilities where we've been working since a few years now. So it will take uh, probably a couple of years for us to reach uh, to that level where the other factories are, but definitely down the line, uh, the effort earn, uh, what we are looking at right now, uh, we will be able to uh, do the numbers based on the same. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and... Uh so, sir, so, uh, just wanted to know in terms of our H1, H2, would it be fair that around 45% would be H1 and 55% because of our seasonality in terms of lighting? Would that be a fair or as your past estimate? What would you think that could be? Absolutely, absolutely. That is uh, bang on. And uh, generally, the ratio is around 45 to 55, give or take a couple of percentage here or there. But generally, that this is the scenario. Oh, perfect, perfect. And so just wanted to clarify, so the 1200 crores that we are speaking about, the block 1, 2, 3, not are existing, correct, sir? That is the uh, top line uh, uh, that we have mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a block 1, 2, 3, not are existing. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, not on. Correct, correct. So, uh, uh, the, five, the total 5 lakh square feet. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, that helps me a lot, sir. And so just wanted to know in terms of market scenario, as we are seeing, ki, you know, inventory restocking is happening. But any other risk that we see, you know, maybe geopolitical risk that's there coming up. So, you know, anything that you feel can be a speed bump to our growth, you know, in maybe in the near term, anything that you could feel that's not going our way, potentially in the macro or micro, whatever you could see. Uh, not really. The only issue was there in the export, like I mentioned, you know, extensively during uh, the questions before as well. Uh, but that also seems to be, uh, you know, clearing out now. Uh, so that is a very positive sign for us because that was the only vertical which was uh, sort of, you know, holding us uh, right now. And looking at the current market scenario, we have performed, uh, you know, quite well to where the market is right now and we are pretty confident that you know we should be able to uh, perform this way that is that is only because of the uh, reason that the kind of product mix that we have and the kind of customers that uh, we have uh, they are basically not on the uh, at the you know lower end uh, of the market spectrum they are from the mid to high end uh, so there we don't see that much of a risk uh, as compared to 
you know products which are primarily catering to the lower end uh, spectrum of the market oh, oh perfect so so one final question what would have been in h1 what would be our export revenue and what would be that have been in fy20 for the full year so uh, the the h1 export revenue uh, was close to around 252 uh, million inr Uh, and what was the second part of your question sorry i missed it how much have we done like visa we like last year h1 how much was it and uh, last year full year how much did we do export revenue uh, so export la- uh, visa with a few uh, you know compared from last year there is a decline uh, first half compared to the first half of last year the decline is close to uh, i think around 30 to 33% Uh, that is the overall uh, decline but like i mentioned there is an upward trend from uh, october and uh, we are very confident that the market holds uh, you know a lot of uh, prospect and uh, it is i think it is just a, a glitch that happened because of covid uh, the circumstances were such that the market uh, was you know not performing as per the expectations but it holds a lot of promise and we are very very confident Uh, that you know uh, uh, whatever apprehensions that uh, you might uh, or the investors might be having in terms of uh, the export market but uh, we uh, you know uh, as uh, management we are pretty sure and confident that uh, there will be a very good turn around that you, you will see in the second half and even the next uh, financial year for the export so uh, so that's uh, great to you so just wanted to last as what would be a capacity utilization currently because we are growing at such a high rate will we have a shortage in like fy24 or how would our capacity be for currently so currently our capacity is close to around 65 uh, to 68% uh, that is including all the uh, you know the different units that we have so capacity is not going to be a problem but i always you know tell all the investors that uh, if you're looking at us uh, you know uh, at, at iq then capa- capacity utilization is not the correct measure because we are not manufacturing products uh, you know which are going into millions of pieces uh, every month so what we are doing is we are doing customization at a scale so imagine uh, manufacturing more than 800 skus in one single factory within 30 days so that is where our usp is and that is where we are different from the industry so uh, it it is not a correct measure because otherwise you would say that 65% uh, you still have a lot of uh, you know capacity open or uh, vice versa as well uh, but it is just that how we manage so many skus within the same unit within those uh, you know 30 days is where the usp lies oh oh so that's a great to know sir Uh, I think most of my questions have been answered. A great talking to you. So all the best. I hope to have a better Q3 call. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may please press star and one on your touchstone phones. The next question is from the line of Jagveer Singh from Shade Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, sir, uh, my question is related to the EBITDA margin. FY22, we have done around 23.2 percent EBITDA margins, and in S1 this year we have done 21 point something. So, when we will reach these kind of margins, we we can attain these uh, these margins. Uh, i'm sorry if you could repeat your question uh, and uh, if you could be a little louder your voice is not very clear okay so we have done around 23 point something margin in the fy22 uh, yes and in the second in the first half we have done around 21.9% margins so we when we can again we can do these kind of margins like 23.3% we have done in the fy22 so uh, this uh, you know from uh, the beginning only we have been uh, you know telling all the investors that our ebitda margin range is always going to be uh, in this uh, in this range uh, 
uh, around you know from uh, maybe 21 to 20 between 21 to 23 percent and this will continue to happen it, it is just that sometimes you know uh, like this time the uh, operational cost for the export unit was slightly higher because of the lower revenue uh, but sometimes some verticals they outperform the expectation some verticals they underperform uh, you know, due to uh, whatever reasons are there in the market. So that is why broadly uh, talking, uh, this range we should be able to sustain going forward in the long run with the current verticals that we have. Okay, the so next question is related to the exports. So we have done around 30 crores in the first half exports. Uh, yeah, the, around 25 point something uh, to be precise. Uh, yes, please continue. So, what is the potential in the say next two three years in the in the export mainly in the specifically in the US or overall in the export side? What kind of potential is there? So, put, uh, I'll tell you for that so because that is why we have opened our office over there. We are going to have the team. We have started already started appointing the team there. And uh, we, uh, as from the beginning, I was very, um, like, uh, I uh, have studied the USA markets as huge, and that is how now we are uh, putting all of our uh, efforts to boost the uh, sales. So very soon we will have our uh, GCC uh, presence also, then uh, um, Saudi, and so on. There are big plans for the exports we have and the product category. Yeah, and then there's a last question related to the uh, domestic market. So, what, how much percentage of revenue we are getting from the Philips? So, the percentage of revenue from Philips currently stands at close to around around 50 50 percent of the overall revenue. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star 1. The next question is from the line of Ashish Rawat from MS Clubstuff. Please go ahead. Uh, Sanjeev Ji, my question is very specific about RV products. Uh, how much uh, big is the market in USA for RV and at what percentage uh, you think it is growing? And uh, do you have any peer competition from India who is supplying the same product uh, to USA? Uh, so to answer your sec the second part of your question, uh, there is no one in India, you know, manufacturing and supplying products related to the RV industry uh, for the US market. And uh, look, and if you ask about the uh, the market the potential over there, uh, so just to give you uh, a small number that is there in the presentation as well. Uh, in the year 2021, around 600,000 RVs, uh, you know, were sold uh, in the U.S. And out of that, there are actually multiple categories of RVs. So we primarily work in the, you know, two to three categories of RVs, and they constitute around 75 to 80 percent of the overall demand uh, uh, in the RV industry uh, in the U.S. So our products can cater to the 75 to 80 percent of the demand of the RVs in the U.S. And uh, like you're aware, we have a whole bouquet of products uh, for the RVs. It is just that, you know, that the, this year has not been uh, <coughs> due to uh, the pressures, uh, of, uh, like I mentioned earlier, inflationary plus uh, due, to the, due to COVID. But now things are settling down and the potential is really very, very good. And that is the only reason, even, you know, have, having seen this decline in the past six months, we are still very, very confident uh, that the market holds a lot of potential and plus there are other products also that we have in our kitty which can cater to a lot of other, uh, uh, you know, verticals, not just the RV. Uh, so that is why the sales team there uh, we have established so that they can work on those areas as well plus try and penetrate more in the RV segment now that it is clearing up. So it, it holds a lot of uh, uh, value in terms of our overall revenue. And, uh, you know, we are also uh, pretty confident that uh, I would not be able to, you know, put a timeline to it, but maybe in the next uh, two years, uh, our, uh, out of the total revenue that we would be generating, we believe that almost 30% is going to come from uh, exports. It could be higher, but uh, that is what, uh, you know, uh, we are speculating in terms of uh, the growth that we see in the export market. 
is fantastic so just just one uh, to just to understand if it just to take one cost of rv how much percentage are proportion into that cost uh the like uh, this is a question uh, you ask like if you ask a car there is from maruti car to mercedes car then rolls royce car it is the same categories they have in those so they have the basic models they are the luxury models they are the super luxury models and there are some niche models also so we are developing two or three products for the upper two or three products uh, things also so uh, i think it will take us about 6 months to develop those products so we are online with that and we know that what is the market demand and what uh, how they uh, move but uh, our wallet share has been constantly increasing if you look at the products uh, so not just indoor outdoor lighting solar panel charge controllers now lithium ion batteries and there are some other electronics also uh, that we are doing which we were already doing in india for uh, certain uh, companies so those electronics also we have already started uh, doing for those rvs so our wallet share is constantly increasing okay so so for so lithium ion batteries you are as, as of now specifically doing for the rv but as you said the in your future it will be spread wide right absolutely oh, okay thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of marcel an individual investor please go ahead yeah hello good afternoon good afternoon yeah my question is uh, first regarding this uh, uh, like for example uh, in the last quarter uh, our export was down and uh, so overall in this quarter how do you see our like uh, revenue growth and the ebitda margin growth and in the next quarter uh, for you particularly asking for the export no no uh, yeah export as well as domestic like uh, uh, in september september quarter uh, like how are you going to fare better in terms of december quarter and the march quarter uh actually your voice is not very clear so it's very hard to understand uh, your question you, yeah if you could repeat the question a little louder and so let me and probably uh, little louder yeah 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 no yeah, actually it's not speaker so uh, my question is that like uh, since we had some setback in the in the september quarter for sports so our overall revenue was also down so how do we see our revenue going forward in the december quarter and, uh, and the march quarter how much percentage do you think that we will be more as compared to september so we are this i think uh, we had already taken up in the previous uh, question uh, we are already seeing an upward trend uh, in the export uh, like i you know mentioned earlier that october month itself we have done close to around 50% of the overall uh, you know revenue that we did in the previous quarter in the export unit uh, so that was the only segment that was lagging behind and now it has started catching up uh, so that's a very big positive uh, sign uh, and uh, Uh, the other verticals are also doing very well and now looking at uh, you know the, the the festivities around so we believe uh, i mean the kind of uh, projections and plannings that we have the the third quarter is going to be uh, you know a promising one yeah and sir like uh, regarding this uh, you said that you uh, you are uh, like also open the gcc market so as we all know that the gcc market is quite lucrative and the prices are very high so are we opening all the six markets all the six countries or only particular one uh, only particular one to country are going so uh, like i mentioned you know the products are under uh, certification so it is not just one country for which we have applied for the certification uh, so but you know you have to understand that uh, to enter any particular country you have to have a lot of certifications the product they need certain changes so it takes some time uh so we have strategized everything we are starting with the uh, uh, two countries to begin with uh, you know in the first phase but uh, we are definitely adding more and more countries and we will not limit ourselves to just the gcc region our plans is to you know even go beyond uh, gcc uh, but to begin with definitely gcc and uh, uh, already uh, the samples and everything are under testing we have uh, formalized the team also there uh, we have Uh, you know the uh, the uh, the uh, person who would be heading this division has a vast experience of over 18 years uh, in uh, you know a similar industry so uh, that is again a big uh, plus for us uh, so that also uh, you know we are we are having uh, 
uh, very uh, good expectations from the revenue that we'll generate uh, eventually from uh, the export in GCC. As well. We also have a common certification for the entire GCC country. So our product fall in that category. That like once uh, yeah, if you take a common certificate from GCC Council, it will be applicable for all six countries. Is it like this, or we have to take the certificate from each country? Actually, from what I know, that is something that will happen in the near future. But as of now, uh, like UAE has a different uh, certification requirement, Saudi has a different certification requirement. Uh, but what you said, uh, I have heard uh, somewhere, you know, I have read somewhere that this there is a possibility that they are also going ahead with that type, type of uh, uh, certification. Like, but like right you, now, like you, there. like Europe. Yes, yes, yes. But right now it is not there. So, sir, I am sure you are uh, you have uh, you have entered Saudi market because in Saudi Neom, the new era of modern living is coming a big way. They are spending hundreds of billions of dollars. So, I think our company can have a very big market if we focus on the Neom in Saudi Arabia. Actually, it is too early to comment on a particular project, uh, uh, and we are right now focused on you know the product display uh, lighting. Uh, so, but we have very good plans in this particular uh, category. We are already in the uh, midst of having, you know, the marketing meetings and everything, and we are seeing very good response. Uh, mm -hmm. and we are as, as our products are uh, like uh, uh, are really niche products, so everyone likes our products, and uh, they are like upscale products. So uh, we are getting very, very positive response, and which you will uh, see in near future over in our numbers also as well. Mm -hmm. Sir, sir, we are we are really thrilled to hear your commentary during this conference. That's what I am adding some you know, some emphasis here. That the Saudi market is a very high margin market, and in the Neom they are throwing money like anything. They are spending yeah. huge money, like hundreds of billions of dollars. They are spending money. Entire city or uh, like a new city is being developed. Or like you know, this, for example, like uh, uh, you can say uh, like uh, environment friendly city. They are establishing. Like, like, I'm sure you are knowing. So what I'm asking. Are you entering Saudi or not currently? And uh, whether are you focusing on Neom uh, sector also, uh, like Neom city or not? So uh, we are definitely entering uh, the Saudi market, but to, to uh, you know, for that particular project that you mentioned, we, uh, I'm aware of that project, the Neom project, and uh, you know the kind of money that they're spending on it. Uh, but to understand it deeply, uh, because this is, uh, I mean, this. Uh, uh, the expansion that we are doing in the GCC market, this is at a very, very nascent stage. We have just recently started, you know, all the development, the certification. And to understand the requirement uh, of every project and the kind of products that are required and the kind of certifications that are required, uh, I'm sure if you have this much knowledge, you will, you would be aware that, you know, Saudi in terms of the certification is also Sato, very, very Sato. expensive. Sato, Sato. So, yeah, that is very, very expensive in order to get the certificate for each product. Uh, so we would definitely, uh, you know, look at uh, uh, all the projects that are coming up and we'll see uh, where our products can fit in and where we are able to give that value addition uh, that, you know, uh, we can provide. Like for the uh, uh, product display lighting, we are very confident that we will be able to give a very good, uh, you know, benefit to our customers because we've seen what... Uh, the you know the Italian products and all these uh, 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 high value products, the kind of quality that they are doing, and we are uh, in in a state to you know compete with them and deliver actually uh, more than what they are already doing. So this is a very big plus that uh, we are providing, and we, this is the feedback that we you know sort of got in, uh, through our first very few first meetings that we have done for the uh, UAE market. No, no, very good, sir. Like this, my last statement. Since you have said that you have hired this, like, uh, uh, the person who will be getting here getting experience, whether he getting experience in UAE market or in Saudi market. Because generally it's a trend because what we understand from our colleagues, that, for example, in Saudi market, if somebody who has worked in Saudi, he will be, you know, like, for example, you know, more, you know, they say, able to uh, to move around and, you know, uh, yeah, and to make some lead. So he has experience of the, uh, the entire GCC region. That is why we are going ahead with, uh, you know, the entire GCC region. Uh, and not just related, uh, you know, uh, confined to the UAE market because although he was working from the UAE market, but uh, like what we will be doing in the entire DCC region, he, uh, I mean, the companies where we where he has worked before, he has also worked for the entire DCC region. Good.
very good. Very good. So kindly focus more. My only suggestion that here that kindly focus more on Saudi because UAE is already saturated market. But in Saudi, it is a huge economy. About you can say ten times bigger economy than UAE. Plus the new city, the which the which are developing new home. Kindly don't miss it, sir. That's my humble suggestion to you, sir. Thank you so much for your suggestion, sir. We we are definitely uh, looking at the entire region, and we focus more on the Saudi market, like you mentioned. Thank you for your suggestion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. So, uh, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for. taking out the time and uh, you know putting uh, these questions uh, to us uh, this really motivates us to you know work even harder uh, so i would like to thank everyone who have joined the call and have uh, you know taken out the time and again i would like to reiterate that i would like to take this, take this opportunity to invite uh, you know everyone we will confirm the dates uh, uh, at a slightly later date uh, but it will be in uh, around february Uh, where we'll have this event where we'll invite everyone for to showcase uh, what we have done uh, with the first tower and uh, what we are planning to do in the coming financial year thank you thank you so much everyone thank you everyone thank you very much thank you